My name is Ross McLecklin, also known as Kareem. It's my chosen Muslim name that I chose myself. My religious upbringing involved going to a Church of England school with Christian values. However, I was not a Christian. I would say that I was just up, up on the fitra and I went to the Boy Scouts, which also included a strong Christian influence. Nothing caused me to question my Christian heritage because I never was a Christian. My father did an honourable thing by not indoctrinating religion into the house. As a child, he was indoctrinated into uh, hating his own family because they were Catholic and he was brought up Protestant. So he decided not to have religion in the house and allow us to make our own decisions and allowed the freedom of choice. Uh, therefore, no religion was brought up in the house. However, I went to the Boy Scouts when I was a kid growing up and I went to a Church of England school so I did have a Christian influence and I always took the good from it like the principles and practices of Christianity of loving for another what you love for yourself like love thy neighbour what Jesus peace be upon him taught I took them parts away um, but I never really embraced the religion I never really followed the church I always found the church when it did go on a few occasions with the Boy Scouts very boring never got involved so it didn't really affect me um, however um, I always had something instilled into me to believe in Jesus peace be upon him as a prophet but the idea of a son of God and uh, God himself incarnate, I never took on them ideas. I never entertained them. They never kind of even came into my head. What attracted me to Islam was the people. Um, I first had a blank slate about Islam. These days, people hear the word Islam and they think 9-11, 7-7. But me, I didn't uh, have any impression at all. And the first person to make an impression of Islam was a man called Ahmed. Now, I approached him um, in order to inspire him with hope that there are good people left in the world. However, it backfired on me because um, when I approached him at his phone store, he asked me um, if I needed any help, thinking I wanted to buy a phone. But I said to him, what are you reading? And he said, oh, just some religious book, and then went to carry on reading, not expecting me to stay. But I said, can I listen? I didn't want to listen. I was just trying to um, pay him respect because he was a different colour or creed to me. Um, and then he said, yeah, this is a book about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Have you ever heard of him? And I said, no. He actually introduced me to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, he said, this is the Prophet of Islam, like the Christians believe in the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. So I said, OK, and I understood then. And then he asked me if I had time, and I had free time at that moment. So he took me on a bus to a place called Highfields in Leicester, and he bought me the Koran, and I was actually shocked because I saw £15 as a price tag, and I thought, he doesn't know me from Adam, he doesn't know if I'm serious, I could be having him on, he could be poor himself, have a family to feed, yet he's going out his way to do that for me. Um, so I made a sincere intention to read that book, at least out of respect for him, if nothing else. And just before we went into the Islamic store, he took me to another corner shop and bought me a pint of milk and offered me food. I had to refuse on the food because I felt overwhelmed by his generosity. And I remember crossing the road to the Islamic store and saying to myself, 
if everybody treated each other the way this guy's treating me, this would be paradise. That's when I walked in and I, I saw the shop and he bought me the Quran. Uh, and then later down the line on my journey, I was going to the masjid and I was going to this masjid. It was at another building before, a derelict building. This is a bigger one now, Masjid Taiba. And what attracted me was all the different people from different nationalities, different colours and races, all under one roof. And it matched my uh, natural idea of oneness and unity that I'd always carried with me anyway. The only interesting topic that I can think that struck me before being a Muslim was um, discrimination. It was through going against discrimination that I found Islam. Um, after Islam, I found many interesting topics. I focused on language. I've always had a flair for languages since I was a little boy. They put me in different language classes at school because they recognised this. My mother always recognised my flair for languages. Um, right now I'm learning Arabic language and I enjoy it thoroughly. Also, I'm studying my native language to the highest level, inshallah, to a PhD, English. Also, I like Islamic history because there's people saying you have to follow this group, that group, stay away from this group and that group, and I'm not interested in the division that people are interested in. Um, it just reminds me of the discrimination again. Um, so what I like to do to use as a shield um, against these people is to develop my knowledge in Islamic history, knowing about all the different groups such as the Ottomans, the Mamluks, the Mughals, the Fatimids, etc. Because then you learn where these groups have all derived from. I converted to Islam July the 16th, 2005, immediately after the Isha prayer. Um, I went into the masjid with the intention of just watching them pray. But then the Imam came over to me with all the people. And I remember when they approached me, I said, I feel like Jesus Christ, because it made me feel so welcome. No one were looking at the color of my skin or the way I dressed or anything. So I didn't feel judged. And after Imam asked me about myself, he said, would you like to know about Islam? And I felt comfortable, so I said, why not? And he quickly explained it like a sales pitch. Like he explained it's based on five pillars. And then after explaining the last pillar, he said, are you ready to embrace? And it put me on the spot. And I said, yes, without even thinking. But as soon as I said that, the wiswas came, making me feel like, what are you doing? But then at exactly the same time as the wiswas, he, the Imam said, say Ashhadu. And as soon as I recited the first syllable, Ash, of the Shahada, I felt something that I could never describe into words. And then when I recited the last syllable, this, this great essence, a great weight um, of uneasiness left me. And I felt some high that no drugs could give a man, like I could fly. That made me know that Allah existed. And I've always wanted to know that Allah existed before I'd ever follow any faith. But that was when I was certain. What inspired me about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is um, what he taught. For example, he taught us that you will never taste the true sweetness of faith unless you love for another what you love for yourself. Um, and if we actually think about that and put it into practice, the world would be a better place and it would be, you could say, perfect if everyone really did care for another person, and that's a uh, true meaning of brotherhood and sisterhood. Also, I like what he says about, um, with regards to himself being a prophet and comparing himself to other prophets, he doesn't make himself any higher or better 
it, in Islam it clearly shows us that there's no distinction between the prophets. Uh, for example, the saying where he says, if you imagine a beautiful house with all the bricks in it and there's one missing brick, I am that brick. I don't have any favourite verses of the Quran. I don't prefer any one over the other. However, I do remember the first significant verse that struck my heart with terror is in Surat Al-Ma'un, Small Kindness, which is woe to those who do deeds to be seen of men. Things that try, that, that inspire me to carry on when I feel that I'm drained and on the verge of falling apart is فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى Verily, after every difficulty there is ease and after every difficulty there is ease um, Other verses um, I am really find inspirational to recite to other people as a reminder is uh, when we talk about the hypocrites, when you see the believers who aren't really believers and all the non-Muslims who see all the hypocritical behavior of Muslims and they wonder why these people won't embrace Islam, it's because the wrong impression is being given to them. And when it says in Surah Al-Baqarah, it says about the hypocrites who will be deeper in the fire of hell than the disbelievers. It says they speak with their tongue and their heart has no conviction in what they say. When they are with the believers, they say, we believe. But when they are with their devils, they say, we're only jesting. Really, we're with you. I like reciting these to other people to remind them that um, what people say with the tongue is not necessarily in the heart. Like the Prophet Wasallam said, true faith is not the profession of your creed with your tongue, but the conduct of your heart. We're at a primary school called Al-Aqsa. This place is important because this is how we do an introduction to a scholarship course which starts off with uh, learning Quranic Arabic. I think it's imperative to have Muslim friends. Like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you are upon the religion of your friend. And if you just look at it logically, what many people say, you can't go in the water and not get wet. So your environment has an effect on you. So if you're around people with certain kind of ideologies, they'll rub off on you. So to me, it's like a battery that needs recharging on your phone. When you go back and plug the battery in because it's drained um, to recharge it, so you still got life. Same with regards to my deen, my religion and Islam. I'll go out there and I'll have some kind of spiritual energy and I have the Iman, that faith, which fluctuates. And when you come into contact with other people, uh, you can have people who are against it, people who will affect your energy. And so when you go back into the like-minded people, like the Quran teaches us to be around the like-minded, it like reinforces the Iman and it strengthens the Iman. You inspire each other and remind each other in truth and patience. I like practicing unity, like to stay around the like-minded people Allah says in the Quran. I like doing this um, simply because of the benefits. It helps increase the Iman, helps you stay away from um, evil. Um, it helps you keep on, to keep on the straight and narrow. It increases the love between you. Like the Prophet Wasallam said, you'll never taste the true sweetness of Iman unless you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And when I increase and steadfastly visit my um, fellow Muslims uh, who I've been blessed with, I increase in knowledge, benefit from them in that way, increasing my love for them. And it um, sometimes overwhelms me with joy and I feel euphoria, absolutely filled with joy just to be around them. I feel so happy and grateful to be alive. So then
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Muhammad Shafi, and I've had the good fortune of knowing Kareem for nearly five years now, I think. Um, I first got to know Kareem when a few friends and I set up a, 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 an iftar event for converts in Leicester uh, once a week on uh, Friday nights. So we called it Friday Night Iftar, invited brothers and sisters who'd, who'd embraced the deen to come down with family and friends and share in breaking the fast and prayers and enjoying a nice meal together once a week. And Kareem was one of the most active brothers involved, come down and often on his bike and make it across town and alhamdulillah take part and so I got to know him then uh, and he told me a lot about him, his journey and his friends and family. Uh, and mashallah, was, uh, so we've kept in touch, I've seen him from time, from time to time since then. And ever since starting this class off, uh, you missed a few weeks, didn't you? But pretty soon into it, he, he joined the class and alhamdulillah, he's been attending very well ever since. When I first uh, heard him speak Arabic in a normal talk in a masjid before, I heard the impeccable Tajweed and made the judgment immediately that the brother's um, accuracy of pronouncing the Arabic tongue is better than many Arabs. Ooh. That's why I approached him and said, do you do Arabic lessons? And he said, as a matter of fact, I do. And then I took his number and now, alhamdulillah, we've begun. And not just with the Arabic language, but um, is I find him. You might, in, many people may misunderstand what I mean, but I use the word open-minded, meaning that he is very. It, 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 I believe that he has a wealth of knowledge, all round, and it uh, lacks much bias. So he has that trustworthy character where I feel comfortable to go to him and be able to get um, on a topic that I may ask a question on, he'd be able to give me more than one view, like a, per what's that word, peripheral vision of an uh, aspect. Kareem's name means generous and kind, so you know, a lot of things he said are probably over generous and, and far too kind. But actually, I've been very impressed with Kareem's development and his progress from the start. Um, today, I think you, you saw him reciting to us a hadith which we covered two lessons ago. He missed the last lesson, unfortunately. But he, the fact that he'd taken, he'd, he's been able to memorize in the Arabic and get to grips with the sentence structure in, and its meaning, uh, an, a linguistic understanding of that and explain that in English, uh, really says a lot about how far he's come in such a short space of time. He's a good and a very diligent student. Uh, usually one of the first to memorize verb tables and things like that. So really, mashallah, he's, I, I, I have a, uh, a lot of hope in Karim. And inshallah, pray that Allah Azza wa Jal uses him to his full potential, allows him to reach his full potential and takes him a very long way, inshallah. My life has improved since embracing Islam in many ways. Um, for example, with regards to education. Before I became Muslim, I never even imagined going to university. Now I'm on my way to um, being a doctor of English language. Um, my uh, ambitions have exceeded my original expectations. I'm the first one in my family to go to university. Um, also, with regards to my family, before I was a Muslim, I never had any ties with my family. They didn't even know if I was alive or dead at some point. Um, however, when I embraced Islam, I found a sense of peace and became more calm in my mannerism. 
and I learned the importance of establishing the ties of kinship and honouring the mother and being dutiful to the parents. Therefore, I started to establish the ties and I have even visited my Scottish side. I went to Glasgow, uh, well, I went to Scotland. I went through Glasgow as well as many other places in Scotland. I cycled there for charity and whilst I was there, I visited my family. Uh, located them um, and I've never met them I've never been to Scotland before in my life the kind of advice I'd give to people who are skeptical about Islam is if they hear things like accusations such as things that demoralize the character of the Prophet peace be upon him um, rather than just believing in hearsay, to verify the knowledge, what you hear, for yourself and go and read, learn for yourself, rather than just believing what people say and blindly following. Uh, also, I'd say don't look at the people, because Islam is a religion which is perfect. It's not just a religion, it's a way of life, a complete way of life, that teaches the, in the perfection of your character. So every human being, no matter how pious or how far from pious they are, no one can actually reach there. It's about striving towards that. And if you look at the people, you never see Islam. So I'd uh, advise them to not judge Islam on its people. Um, they seem to be the worst of people, the Muslims, like selling pork, alcohol and uh, drugs, yet Islam forbids it. Um, so we need to look at the book, the Quran, and if you do want to look at any person, look at the example of the Prophet Muhammad See how he treated people, how he was kind to his neighbours, and how he was even merciful towards his enemies. What Islam means to me is submission to the will of the Creator, which goes against my will. So I, want, I might not want to do what I please, which is not necessarily for the greater good. And no human being, because we all got differences of opinion, can state what's good and what's not, because we might differ. Therefore, we need that source to teach us them universals and if people really have understanding and don't bicker over our differences we'll unite because every single human being cannot deny if they're honest with themselves that the righteousness is a universal and these universal laws like to love one another and not to cause harm to other people to have respect these are in the will of the Creator and we submit to that which means sometimes going against our own desires